Welcome to this presentation of Atlas 5 for Microsoft Dynamics AX2012. Today I'm going to demonstrate importing a general ledger journal from a spreadsheet into Dynamics AX. I have a couple of spreadsheets I have prepared. Uh, this first one is uh, just a general mix of uh, going in and out of some general ledger accounts. Row 3 is a bit different. I'm actually going to add a debit to a customer. Uh, and the revenue side going to this general ledger account for a 1160. I also have some dimensions in my workbook uh, so that um, I want these to come through as well. To get this into Dynamics AX I simply need to invoke my journal upload. I'm going to choose the journal I'd like to upload into. My confirmation and click upload. What this upload will do is it will do the full validation before a journal is created in Dynamics AX. The number sequences are all uh, derived from AX, so full support for vouchers and journal numbers is provided. Okay, that journal is uploaded. Journal batch number 424010 is waiting inside Dynamics AX to be posted, uh, and as a, another verification, Atlas is actually placed into the cell H3 the journal number that was just uploaded. So if I'm going to run AX, have a look at the general ledger journal, and that journal should be waiting for me. So we have the journal here, I can have a look at my lines. And so what you'll see is even though in the spreadsheet the dimensions have been broken out uh, into separate columns as you would expect, when they actually come into Dynamics AX uh, they are in the uh, format that Dynamics AX requires. The customer line, uh, I need to look at my dimensions through this method up here to see they've come through also. So Atlas has successfully managed to upload this particular journal, it's just a matter of posting it or uh, removing it. If I have a look at another type of journal, uh, as another example, I have one for perhaps customer opening balances. Where in this case I'm going to be going to all of these customers uh, and to a single offset account, uh, which is my control account. Uh, that way the net effect in my balance sheet uh, and PL is zero. So I shall simply do the same again. I shall choose uh, journal. Exactly the same principle. Confirmation upload. And a new journal 425010 uh, has been uploaded uh, and I can see that it's not been posted yet as you would expect. So now if I, again if I go back into my general ledger journal. I've now got some customer opening balances uh, waiting to be posted, all to the same offset account. I'm going to show you the mapping that was done to uh, generate this upload. Atlas has, uh, what Atlas requires you to do is for a given upload you're required to tell Atlas where certain fields are found. So if I look at the journal lines for example the date column of a journal line is found using this Excel name range called Transdate. So if I happen to have a look at Transdate you can see this is the selection here. If I look at my account type You can see it's getting it from this range here. The main accounts are from here. So, it, so Atlas goes and gets things from the sheet, that, uh, and, the, and that can be anywhere uh, in the sheet. So, it doesn't have to be a particular place, or the, the workbook doesn't have to look a certain way. For example, the I equally could have said for my journal name, uh, which is getting it from. 
d3 I equally could have chosen to go and pick it and actually choose the cell that contains it so it could be a cell reference as well when it comes to the lines I've chosen name ranges uh, to again use the power of Excel so for example uh, if I wanted to add some lines to this particular journal um, I suggest tab off the end and I'll choose line 5 and I'm just going to copy some uh, data debits and credits uh, and simply uh, what I can now simply do is upload this 46010 is waiting to be posted if I look at my journals and now look at my lines uh, you'll see the additional lines have come in with the correct uh, mapping so this is just using the power of Excel uh, and name ranges where the name range itself gets extended so if I come back to my mapping and again look at my transaction date uh, you can see Microsoft Excel has all automatically extended the range so I don't need to so once I've defined this mapping once I really can uh, skip this and just go straight to confirmation each time If I find there's a, an additional field I'd like to import uh, on a particular upload, uh, let's say for example on my customer balances, I'd actually like to include a new field. Uh, let's just insert that. And I'm going to call this expense purpose, that happens to be a dimension I'd like um, and just for argument's sake uh, so to do that I need to go into my design mode for my journal and from the lines perspective I need to go and add a field so I'm going to pick up the default dimension expense purpose and add that in there uh, so now I can opt to what I shall do here also is I shall just create a name range So if I have the properties of this, I can go and add in my name range and I can opt if I want to hide this or not. By hiding the field, uh, that typically means that the user is not going to be asked um, at runtime. Uh, and that's typically for things like vouchers and other fields that are handled by number sequences where you don't need uh, to see it on the workbook. Uh, however, you need the field to be populated, but I'll keep that visible for now. So, so now when I simply change back to standard mode you'll see I can now map to this new field expense purpose uh, and as I upload I have a new journal waiting to be posted and in my lines I'll expect to see training. So Atlas is very versatile, uh, can be used uh, to import uh, journals as well as uh, any other data which will follow in other examples um, and again if I want to finally if I want to get this into another workbook I simply need to save this upload definition uh, out uh, so then I can bring it into another workbook. Thank you very much.